Hi guys, it's Maddie from Quarantine. Um, I'm doing my presentation on the Journal Heroes for Never Stay Silent. And for this project, I decided to go with someone who was a little less well known, but still created such a huge impact for people. Um, so my story or my journal hero is Megan Tuhay. Um, she actually works for the New York Times currently. And she started out at the Chicago Tribune doing investigative reporting. Um, in 2009, she actually did an investigative um, report about how the Chicago Police Department was not testing every single rape kit that came in. And because she posted this report, she was actually able to get it into law. Um, so Illinois became the first state to actually require testing for every single rape kit. And after that story was posted, a lot of states followed after. Um, and she continued on with getting into like law and legislature after that. So in 2010, she actually reported on doctors who were actually convicted of sex crimes, who were still abusing patients and also practicing medicine. And so because she did a series of stories about this, she was actually able to see legislation pass that required healthcare professionals to get a background check, which you would think would always already be a thing, but it is not. <laughs> um, so after that, she ended up doing some more stories and more investigative reporting for Reuters News, where she discovered that Americans were actually finding places to abandon their adopted children on the internet. And this story ended up making it to the nightly news and to the Today Show on NBC. So that was kind of like a little big, big break for her. Um, in 2016, when she had started working for the New York Times, she published a series of stories about the sexual allegations made about President Trump, who was a, just a presidential candidate at the time. Um, and he became so angry about it, he threatened to sue the New York Times, which he did not end up doing, at least not suing them for her. Um, and then in 2017, this is where uh, Tuhe got her big break. Her and another colleague at the New York Times named Jody Cantor decided to release um, a story about Harvey Weinstein. And the story was titled, Harvey Weinstein paid off sexual harassment accusers for decades and it was published in the New York Times and this wasn't really well known to the general public at least not for me um, I found out my sophomore year so it was 2017 um, and basically she had they had interviewed um, women who had been sexually assaulted or sexually harassed by Harvey Weinstein and he had either paid them off or scared them off by like threatening their job or threatening to say that like he had all this power and stuff which he did and um, that's why he got away f like away with it for so long um, and so basically these two women were able to like produce a story it was one of the first ones for the Me Too movement which of course is for women who have been sexually harassed or sexually assaulted and they haven't reported it because of the power that their abuser holds um, and so she actually produced a story that was one of the first for the Me Too movement and it's 2020 now and there's it's been three years and she actually has been able to see Harvey Weinstein go to jail for what he did um, and the Me Too movement really hasn't stopped because people keep doing awful things um, but that was insane that she like had the confidence to be able to report on that because um, especially as a woman in a male dominated field um, it can be scary to come out and say things that um, can be controversial, but um, a lot of people backed her, obviously. The New York Times backed her, um, even though she knew publishing the story could jeopardize her career. So I think that's just very important because I've always said that um, being a journalist, you have to stand up for the people who don't have a voice for themselves, so give a voice to the voiceless, um, essentially, and that's a big reason why I want to be a journalist. So it's really inspiring to see another woman like that um, be able to make such a difference for thousands of people um, because she had the courage to post a story like that. So yeah, that's kind of um, my journal hero. Um, I really wish that I was in class giving this presentation instead of in my childhood bedroom. Um, but hopefully I'll see you guys in August potentially for real life graduation, who knows. Um, but I miss you guys lots and I hope everyone's staying healthy and well.